All right, guys, this is El Master here, and today we are going to be talking about Protoss versus Zerg. And I will start straight off by mentioning that this is, especially when you're a newer player, it is Protoss's hardest matchup for sure. It's technical, there's a lot more going on, uh, just a lot more stuff to worry about, trickier builds, and Zerg is just generally uh, mobile and hard to deal with, and there's just there's a lot of things going on. So if you're a little bit frustrated with this matchup as you're, as you're learning, don't worry, that's pretty normal. Um, and while it's not an imbalanced matchup, it's definitely a matchup that slightly favors Zerg, even as you get up to higher levels, but especially when you're learning, it's just, it's a tricky matchup. I would say, especially when you're new, it's just, there's a lot more things you have to do right as Protoss than there is a Zerg. So don't go around thinking this matchup is imbalanced, it's not, but also realize it's normal and perfectly okay to be a little frustrated when you're learning PvZ. There's also just a lot more to remember when you're new. Um, because like, you know, Terran, it's pretty simple, you can just build a few gateways, expand, get a few Dragoons, whatever. Uh, PvZ is very, very timing oriented. You need everything at the right time to be able to accomplish anything effective. So if your build isn't good in PvZ, you'll suffer a lot more than you would in a PvT or maybe a PvP. Um, yeah, so I guess once once this gets rolling here into the game, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about what we uh, what we are trying to achieve. But in general, we're going to be showing a basic uh, plus one uh, zealot build, kind of a, a pretty standard way to play PVZ. Uh, I would say you can use this in most standard PVZs, and it'll work out pretty well. Again, it won't necessarily be an optimal response. There are better responses as you get more experienced, but this is sort of a reasonably safe way to play that won't have you dying to anything and won't have you getting into some horrible, super far behind position. Um, you know, because your build was way too safe. So, like normal, we're going to build probes, and then what's key here is once we have six probes made, so we have six now, we're going to need to send, and we've queued up to make uh, two probes, we'll send a probe to the natural. It's very important, we're going to be doing a forge expand build. One base builds uh, are not that great in PvZ. Uh, in most cases, the standard way to play is to quickly expand. So you might say, oh my god, but but Zerglings, they're so good, right? They are, but we have a way to deal with them. So you can see we're building a pylon, pylon at the natural, pylon, building a pylon at the natural, and then this is going to be an important part of what you need to learn, and it's just one of the steps that goes into learning PvZ, is you're going to need a wall, and that wall ideally needs to be done correctly. The general gist of a wall is a forge and a gateway and a pylon, narrow the opening so that a bunch of lings can't run in and surround everything and it's basically a solid way to prevent dying to a zergling rush and then of course you're gonna go scout with your probe and then once your pylon is done you're gonna come down and build a forge now what your probe sees is very important and will determine the order uh, in which you build you're gonna build that forge now with the probe if you see a spawning pool here when you got here and no base yet building at the natural um, oh, also, if you haven't scouted Zerg, make sure to send out a second probe. In other words, the probe that builds the forge goes out to scout. You really want to double scout like that, so you can have two probes scouting. Um, so if you see a spawning pool like that, you'll need to build one cannon, or I'd say since you're new, just build two cannons. Um, if you see a spawning pool first, that way you won't die to initial lanes. When you get a little bit more experience, you do have the option to build just one cannon, which I will here, uh, depending on how many Zerglings the Zerg makes. If you see all three uh, morph immediately when the pool is done, that means he's making three sets of Zerglings, and then you'd probably want two cannons. For two or four lings, you can technically get away with one, but it might be better to be safe and just go with two. Uh, notice I was doing that with the probe, being an annoying, denying the hatch. If you can do stuff like that, it's great, it's cute, but don't let it mess up your build. Denying the hatch is not more important than doing your build. If you fuck up your build, you will be so far behind relative to the five seconds you denied the hatch. Um, so now I'm watching, I saw that he didn't build all his lings at once, he's only made two, I don't need an extra cannon. So then the next thing you want to build once you have 400 minerals is your nexus. Also, when you're building your nexus, don't go over 15 probes, stop at 15 out of 17. Uh, don't build a nexus on 16 or 17. And then you want to get your gateway on 15, then you can start building probes again. And then, as soon as you have the money, you'll want to build a pylon on 16 and the gas on about 16 or 17. Uh, but pylon first, then take your gas. 
So to outline and uh, cover that just because it's important. Forge, um, if you see a spawning pool before a hatchery, then you'll need two cannons If you at your natural, obviously. Well, that's the only place you have the pylon. And if you see a hatchery first, then you can go ahead and make a nexus and a gateway before you add your cannons. As another rule of thumb to know when to add cannons, you need to start adding your cannons right at the time Zerg starts making his Zerglings. That way they'll finish on time. So easy way to remember if you can get a nexus first or cannons is just take a look at that pool and say, do I have time to start the links uh, or start the cannons once the links make? So you'll start mining gas. And as soon as you have 200 minerals, uh, after that, you will build your cybernetics core. And from there, we are going to get a, a in order, we are going to get with our gas. Uh, as soon as the cybernetics core finishes and we have enough gas, we're going to get a stargate. And then that should come around 4.20 to 4.30 on the game timer if you're doing it right. If you're way off, if you're finding you're not getting your Stargate till 5 or 5.30 or something, practice your build a little more. If it's off too far, you're going to have a really hard time. Um, so Stargate's going to go down. And then with your next 100 gas, you're gonna, as soon as you make your Stargate, you're going to get your second gas. So Cybernetics Core finishes, get your Stargate, then get your second gas. And then with your next 100 gas, get weapons. And then with your next gas after that, get your Citadel of the Doom. So there's that second gas. And then you'll see as soon as I have the gas and the money, I will start weapons. I think that was like slightly late on weapons or something. I didn't quite have the right resources. And then at about 30, you'll want another pylon. Key thing in PvZ is pylons. It's the trickiest matchup, at least for me, to stay up on pylons. Always start building a new pylon four or five supply early. And if necessary, start building two pylons at a time. It's a lot better than getting really supply blocked, especially in early stages. You don't want to be supply blocked because then your Corsair will be late. Now, we'll talk a note about this Stargate. Corsairs, of course, don't attack ground, um, but they have two main purposes. Their first purpose, uh, and it's by far their lesser purpose, is to harass overlords. It's great, you can kill overlords with them. That's cool. Uh, their far, far more important purpose is to scout. Now, they're hard to use, they require a lot of APM, and of course they don't attack ground, which is most of Zerg's army. So as a general rule of thumb, I would say if you're new, build just one or two Corsairs. Don't go crazy, you don't need to build five, six, eight Corsairs. Uh, unless, the one exception being you scout Zerg making mutas. Then go ahead and make, I would say, seven or eight Corsairs and you'll be alright. So I'm just going to make a couple here, same thing. Um, they're just hard to use and get value of, but having two or three to scout is great. And it, it's, you've made enough that if Zerg suddenly surprises you with Muta and you still have three Corsairs, you can hold them off carefully with three Corsairs and then add in, uh, or two Corsairs, and then add in a few more if Zerg were to make Muta. That's also another reason why we build the Stargate. If we skip the Stargate entirely and Zerg make, makes Muta, then we're going to have a hard time defending. Even with a lot of Dragoons, you'll find that a good player with good Mutalist control will just dance all around your Dragoons, kill all your probes, and make life a living hell. And then, uh, as soon as the Citadel finishes, we want to get our plus one, and we are checking what Zerg is doing just with this Corsair. Again, don't need to worry about killing Overlords, just want to see what he's doing. Uh, we're going to, I think, double back here and check for a fourth base, and try to get a read on his build. And of course, we're getting that thing, and also from the Gateway, all the time, we're building uh, one Zealot at a time. Keeping up with those pylons, we see he's putting down a base back here. Now he's put this base at the fourth base, so there are two options. He's going for six six hatches, and uh, Zerg can play either five hatch or they can play six hatch. If they're playing six hatch, they also have two options, two general options. Option one is they can get six hatches and mass a whole bunch of units, usually Hydra, and try to either deny your third or outright kill you, or they can go with that hatch at that fourth base. They can go into a, uh, a bunch more drones and either play a lair heavy army game or play a hive game and our responses against those would need to be a little different also you can see I added the template archives and now I'm exploding my gateways I have my plus one zealots and I'm gonna go out and pressure with them with these zealots uh, if Zerg has something like this two sunken colonies don't go in there uh, the wall will, will fuck you up it'll block you I just kill a few drones and get out of there um, but if you go in too much and commit, this was a bit of a mistake. I get, didn't expect these lings to be here, got surrounded by them, lost a few zealots. That's not very good for me. Um, but as a general rule, just run in. If there's like nothing there, or you really think you can do damage, go for it. But more often than not, it's better just pressure, poke, force a few units. That's a few less drones for Zerg, that's good. And uh, just kind of be obnoxious. Then from there, between what you saw with your Zealot Pressure and what you saw with your Corsairs, uh, then you have to make a decision about what to do. Now, in this case, because I lost those Zealots, I wanted to go take a third pretty quickly, because I've seen that he's still adding on drones. 
but I lost those zealots and I made a couple little mistakes here. I got my gateways a bit slow. I have to make more gateways than I want. And he's got, and I lost those zealots. I don't have a big enough army. I saw he's already got like 20 zerglings. If I run a few zealots over there and try to take my third, he's either going to run in and surround my zealots and kill me, or he's going to maybe run into my main, kill my cannons, and cause a bunch of problems and also shut down my third base in the process. So I have to get extra gateways to keep my money low, and I have to delay my third base a little bit. Not horribly late, but it's definitely not as quick as I would have liked. Now, if you see a Zerg, and this is where I'm checking with my Corsairs, now I want to see what is Zerg making. That Evo Chamber makes me think he wants to play a long game, but I'm just seeing, uh, here I'm seeing a few Hydras. So I need to keep paying attention, but if you see a Zerg and he's switching into making a bunch of Hydras right now, no drones, then don't take your third nearly as fast. Just, uh, you might even need to add a few cannons. If you, if you don't think Storm is going to be done in time, and he's already starting to get like 12 Hydras, add 4 or 5 cannons. It's okay to have 6 cannons in the natural if you're a little bit worried. Uh, so start adding that in. Get a bigger army, wait till you have 4 or 5 Templar ready with Storm, some Zealots, maybe add in a few Dragoons, then move out and fight against his uh, large Hydra force while taking your third. Now here I'm going to come out and see what he has. I have seen him building a few Hydras, but then I was checking with my Corsairs. It seems like he's building more drones, so at this point I'm getting the vibe. He wants to play a longer uh, heavy eco game. That means I need to get a third base up and uh, start thinking about uh, Hive play. Especially judging from that Evo Chamber, it makes me think that he's getting fast upgrades, and that makes the most sense with a more Hive-oriented game. Uh, and I also see here, see here's an important point where I'm checking with the Corsairs, and I'm leaving them here for a moment. I have to be careful of their Scourge. But I want to see what's coming out of these eggs, and I see drones. That tells me this guy, still droning, still trying to get an eco, so I need bases, and I need to make sure I keep my economy up. You also have the option, if a Zerg plays like this, it is an option to just get eight gateways, get, you know, uh, a couple rounds of Zealots, your four to five High Templar, add in some goons, and once you start adding in some goons, start pressuring. This will usually mean you'll have a control group and a half of Zealots, uh, a few Templars, and adding in some Dragoons, and then you can pressure and go for the kill. Just realize, if you don't do a lot of damage, you'll be behind. Now this is a little bit scary for me. I got my robotic facility a bit later than I should have, and a, and a late observatory as well. So he has these lurkers, and I don't have detection here at this base, but this third base is really important. I don't want to lose it. So I'm just defending, I'm trying to, not to let him come up the ramp, and here I run the zealot around, and I'm just trying to get the lurkers to attack not up the ramp, but rather at that zealot, just buying a little bit of extra time because I really needed those cannons to finish. And fortunately they did, so I was able to get my third base, which is a big deal. Had I lost that third base, I would have been in a pretty bad spot. That was just a little bit of cute stuff, but something to talk about. That's why I ran that zealot around like that. Transferred a few too many probes here. Not a, not the end of the world, but something to be cognizant of. And I also made zealots a little too long. I would say I've got over two control groups. I would say normally you want to make between 12 and 18 zealots. A control group and a half or so is about right. More than that is is a few too many, especially in the mid game. You just won't have any way to deal with lurkers. Zealots are horrible against lurkers. If Zerg makes a lot of lurkers more Dragoons. Until Hive. Once there's Hive out, Dragoons get pretty crappy because of Dark Swarm and Cracklings are just way too strong against them. So uh, late game, it's more Archon Zealot. You can have 5-6 Goons with your army, but don't have like 30 Dragoons with your army. They'll be not good. But mid game, Dragoons are fantastic. Um, so yeah, that kind of covers uh, your initial game in, in a totally good situation for you if you wouldn't have lost those initial zealots like I did. Uh, you would go ahead, you know, you've gotten your uh, core up, you'd get your 100 gas, you'd, um, shit, that. Uh, you'd, you'd get your stargate with your first 100 gas, you'd spend your next 100 gas right away on your plus one weapons, your next gas goes to the citadel, uh, you'll get your... Uh, your, your leg speed, and then as soon as you get leg speed, add the Templar archives, start adding more gates, build 4 to 5 Templar, get Storm, and go ahead and cause uh, mayhem with 4 to 5 gates of pressure. And once you've got your Templar out and have made a round of Zealots, you can go, this will usually be around 100 supply, you can go and take your third base, and at the same time you're taking that third base with your, your group and a half of Zealots, your 4 or 5 high Templar, a few Dragoons, you can pressure Zerg a little bit. This means poke and prod at the front, don't commit to any crazy attacks unless he's got nothing, you don't want to lose your whole army, but just go in there and see what Zerg has, force him to build a few units, storm some stuff if you get the chance to, you know, just, just you know, basically you're, you're using that army to pressure Zerg to allow you to get your third safely behind it. You're not trying to kill him. Then once you have the third, explode up to, you know, 9, 10 gateways, start getting a bunch of units out, 
and then look to either attack a little bit more aggressively or quickly go for a fourth and fifth base of your own, which is what I want to do here. I'm actually taking it a little bit slow, um, but I'm getting a fourth relatively fast, which is important against a Zerg with a big economy. If you're not going to try to break him right away, then you absolutely need a big one. Here I'm going for the attack. Uh, it's a little bit weirdly coordinated. I get some storms off, but there are still lurkers kind of back there. So I need to pull back. You never want to fight with zealots and the lurkers. It's, this is one of the reasons why army control and PvZ is kind of demanding and tricky. If you just run your zealots, you know, into the zerg and he's got a bunch of lurkers, your zealots will literally just melt apart and you'll, you'll lose them super fast. You absolutely have to, have to, have to lead and fight mostly with the Dragoons, uh, attack with the Dragoons, when Zerg runs in, storm, 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 and then when the Lurkers are, are mostly reduced, when you're down to, I'd say, one to three Lurkers or so, then you can let the Zealots come in and start fighting. If you're not making any headway with your Dragoons, Zerg runs in all of his stuff, your Dragoons are pretty fragile to die, so pull everything back away from the Lurkers, then send your Zealots in. Again, that's the, the tricky army control part of it. You know, it, it just takes a lot of practice. It's hard to do it first. You won't be that efficient. So just keep playing and you'll get better and better at it. But basically, attack the lurker field with the dragoons, have the templars close by to storm inco incoming units. If zerg runs in with a bunch of stuff, you retreat away from the lurkers and then let your zealots fight. Once lurkers are no numbers are low, then zealots can fight just fine. Now here, um, I've, I've won the fight against his army, which is a pretty big win for me. He really wanted that position. I know I killed a lot of his units with a pretty good good uh, battle. I'm reinforcing, very important. Always, 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 always reinforcing PvZ. It's important in any matchup, but it's it's critical here. So now here, I'm getting up this ramp, and I really want to deny this base. I don't want to let Zerg have a fifth base. Uh, as Zerg starts to take more and more of that map, that just gives him so much gas to work with. He can start pumping crazy amounts of Ultralisks, Defilers, stuff you don't want to deal with. So work hard to deny that base. You can see I'm in the fourth base. I immediately am getting Reavers here. One thing I'm not doing, it's bad, don't follow the example in this one, uh, is I have not sent any High Templar nor built a gateway at that fourth base. I don't have Reavers yet, so right now that fourth base is very vulnerable. If this guy was playing a little bit smarter of a game, he would have sent out Defilers, uh, or certainly a bunch of Cracklings, and been attacking that base. And without Templars there, I would have a very hard time to defend it, my whole army would have to come running back, and then I would have no way to stop him from sending four or five lurkers over to that top base and uh, securing it. So it's it's key, it's key, it's key, it's key to when any, whenever you're taking expansion, really from your third base on, you've got to send units over there. Ideally, include a Templar or two, and leave those Templar at your expansions. If you don't do that, good Zergs will pick you apart. Like I said, I was lucky he wasn't going for that. I think he was scared of my army. Um, but, you know, good zergs with swarms, with lurkers, with hydras, they will go up those ramps and they will just destroy your expos and your army. You'll spend your whole time running back with your army, desperately trying to defend and getting nowhere. And your whole time will be defending. And even if you defend your base, you know, you'll have this big fight. Maybe you'll survive. You'll have your fourth base. And then you'll send, you'll look out back at the map and zerg will have taken three more bases and you'll be like, oh. It's four bases against a seven base Zerg that's spored up and lurkered up at every base and it's totally unbreakable. Uh, so I can't emphasize how important it is when you take bases. It's okay even if it makes your army smaller, always send five, six, ten zealots over to a base. Ideally if you have them, send a Templar to there. Make sure you get Templars at your bases. Once Zerg is on Hive, make sure you add a Reaver defensively at your bases. Offensive Reavers, really demanding, hard to use. You can try to use them, you can practice it, it's great to do. Uh, I'm all for learning it, but if it's not going well for you, don't freak out about having not having offensive Reavers in your army, but absolutely, absolutely Reavers for defense at bases at your fourth and beyond. Um, High Templar are great defense, but once Swarm starts getting in there, you'll need Reavers. There's a lot of good tactics Zerg can do. Uh, number one, your, storm, your, swarm, your Swarms will run out. Number two, if they use Swarm, they can send one link underneath the Swarm, attack a cannon. Can't kill it, and that Templar, you don't want to waste one Storm on one link, right? But they'll, you know, but you'll have to. So the Reavers help prevent with that, do a whole bunch of splash damage, just add a lot of defensive power. Here, I almost messed up. This is the last point I wanted to talk about. Notice, I didn't have anything over at this base to see what was going on. So Zerg blocked three or four Lurkers over here, and now I'm having a really hard time getting up this ramp. If I hadn't won that first battle, a little bit better, and he had a big army, he would just run over here, send some units on top, and I would have to go away, and Zerg would have a free fifth base. So it's crucially important. 
in PvZ to defend that fourth base and always have, uh, or, or to, to look at those fifth and sixth bases, those extra expansions for Zerg, and always be having something there to watch. A DT, a Zealot, and OBS. you got to know right away. If you give Zerg 45 seconds a minute, they'll send six Lurkers, burrow them, unbreakable base. So that largely wraps up this tutorial. I just wanted to go, since we talked about a lot, there's more to remember with this one. I really want to go over and just kind of recap uh, everything we talked about, and I'll put this in a uh, slide that sort of shows as I talk here. But key points. Uh, make six probes. Once you have two queued up, six probes out on the field, two queued up, uh, send, or at seven supply, send a probe out to your natural. At your natural, build a pylon. And then at your natural, you want to build a forge and a gateway. Now, you'll one thing I sort of touched on but didn't go deep into is that you need to have the forge and the gateway positioned such a way to block the Zerglings. It's not something that can be generalized in a tutorial um, or anything like that. However, uh, so you, in other words, to learn what positions, what locations you need to put, gateways, forges, stuff like that, you'll probably need to either look up maps or at least have a general concept of what needs to happen. So I will touch on that general concept here real quick. Um, the general rules of walling are this. Forge needs to be always lower than the gateway. If the gateway is on top of the forge, it is ling tight. If the forge is on top of the gateway, zerglings can slip through there. Um, pylons are never ling tight to anything as far as I know. The other thing to watch is um, gateways and forges. Uh, generally, uh, left side is left side of a forge, uh, and I think maybe right side of a forge too is always tight. Left side of a gateway, I think, can be open. So I think if you're if in doubt, put the forge on the left uh, side. But in general, there's also two ways to do walls. Number one is to put a pile in the middle, have a gateway on the left side, or a forge on the left side, gateway on the right side, have a little narrow opening in the middle for one unit to slip at in and out. The other way you can do it is to do some combination where you have a pylon, and then maybe on top of the pylon is a forge, and then on top of the forge is the gateway. So you'll have to play around with that. Another possible combination, depending on the space, is to have sort of a pylon on the left side, and then to the right of that, a forge, and then sort of on top of the forge, but maybe moved left or right, is another gateway. So there's stuff on Liquipedia. You can look up how to do it, but that's the general rule. Try to make good walls. If you make bad walls, Zerg can make, just make a whole bunch of lings with speed and run them through your wall and kill all your cannons and just end the game really fast. So having a decent wall is reasonably important. So build order-wise, uh, you get that forge, then you'll scout Zerg. Uh, also, after the forge, make sure you double scout. That way you can make the best decision possible. So if you get to Zerg's base and you see a hatchery already making and no pool, um, then you can go ahead and make a nexus before any cannons. If, however, you see a spawning pool, make two cannons. If you're feeling really confident and you know and saw that Zerg is making only two links or only four links, one cannon is okay. Safety, make two cannons. Then at 15, you want to make a gateway, um, make your gateway, and then as soon as that gateway is done, you can start making probes again. You'll want to make a pylon, take your gas, then after that gas, make your cybernetics core, and then after that cybernetics core finishes, uh, you'll make your stargate with your first 100 gas, then you'll get plus one weapons with your next 100 gas, and then with your next 100 gas, you will get your citadel of a dune. Also, after the Stargate is when you usually want to take your second gas. If you get it later than that, you will not have enough gas to get your Templar archives and your Templar out, and that is not good. So make sure you gas right about the time you're getting your Stargate. And then, of course, your plus one weapons, your Citadel. Uh, from your gateway, from the start, you should be making Zealots the entire time. That way you'll have five or six when you move out with your speed lot timing. Uh, as soon as that citadel finishes, you start getting leg speed, and once that leg speed is about half done, you've got five or six zealots, you start walking towards Zerg's base. Uh, if you go out when you're about halfway to maybe two-thirds of the way done, your speed will finish right as you reach, as, reach Zerg's base, giving you the fastest timing. Fast timing is good there because it forces him to make units earlier in the game than any other time, which will reduce his economy. Again, with the Zealots, don't have to kill the Zerg, but at least get in there, do some pressure, kind of scare him, but don't commit unless you know you can break him. Losing all the Zealots uh, for only killing a building or two or a drone or some units is, is bad. It's not good. So don't waste the Zealots. 
Uh, and then after, as you're moving out with those zealots, add the template archives and then add additional gateways. Shoot for about five gateways, make a round of four or five Templar, and then go back into zealots. Once you have the Templar with Storm, um, then you'd need to make a decision. If you want to play for a long macro game with four or five gateways, you would generally want to take a third and then pressure the Zerg a little bit. When I say pressure, I don't mean attack, don't try to kill him. Just go up to his base, run in there, see if you can draw some units out, drop some good storms, but don't commit to a big fight and lose all your stuff. That'll set you really far behind. So just pressure, and while you're doing that attack, get your third base up, and then the other way you can also play if you want to uh, is you can just make eight gateways, make a bunch of units, like I said, usually about a group, group and a half of zealots, add a few high Templar. Once you have those group and a half of zealots and high Templars, switch into Dragoon production for mid-game. A Dragoon heavy army is fantastic, so make that Dragoon heavy army, and then go to Zerg's base and pressure and try to kill him. Uh, and then if that's if he's playing, if you're going for the kill method, if you're going for the economy method, you would have taken your third base with four to five gateways. This should happen somewhere around 100 supply, 110 supply maybe. Um, you'll get that third base, you'll add four or five more gateways, so you've got about 10. And then you can move out into the map and start to put on real pressure with the Zerg and also start taking a fourth base, thinking about a fifth base. As you take that fourth base, very important, send units over there uh, with it. It's okay if it makes your army smaller. You don't need to have a ridiculously huge army in PvZ, so feel free to send some Zealots over there. Ideally, get a Templar over there, start taking that fourth base, add cannons, and then once you have a fourth base, start adding in Reavers for defensive purposes, and then you're good to go. Make sure you keep Templar at your bases. If you don't, Zergs will ruin your day. So Templar at bases, Reaver at bases once you have four or more, and uh, from that point, you're basically looking to deny Zerg Expos. So Zerg will already have four. They might be having a fifth. You want to try to stop them from having a fifth and certainly a sixth. So focus on denying bases. If you can't, it happens. It's okay. And remember that to deny bases, it's very important. You need to always, always, always have scouting at those bases. Whether that's Zealots, Dark Templars, and OBS kind of looking, you've got to know. If you give Zerg about a minute, maybe even a little bit less, without paying attention to them, it's very easy to run five, six, seven lurkers over there and just burrow them up at that base. And lurkers up a ramp are almost unbreakable, especially in large numbers. So all it takes is a short bit of time and Zerg gets a base for free. Got to watch that. Um, so that, that scouting is, is key. Um, and so yeah, secure your own. And beyond that, I don't think there's too much more uh, to add. So yeah, I think we've covered everything. Thanks for watching and look for more next time. I think I might make another one. This this kind of covered standard PvZ, I guess what you'd call a standard game, but in PvZ there's there's a lot of variations. There's a lot of weird builds that Zerg can do, and I might make a video at some point covering how to defend some of those weird builds, like fast mutilisks, fast lurkers. There's a really common all-in with three hatch Hydra that you need to know what to do, so I might make a video talking about defense of some of those in the future, so be on the lookout for that. And thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.